Hey guys, we're doing a video walk walkabout uh, interior walkthrough of the Toyota FRS. It is basically modeled or similar to the Subaru BRZ. So the point of this video, there's plenty of videos showing the exterior and performance. What we wanted to do was kind of show the inside of the car and some of the dash and radio functions. This version of the automatic has paddle shifters, you'll see. There's a minus and plus on the other side, and the automatic can be shifted to a shiftable mode. Yeah, manual mode. Manual mode. Let's do a quick walk interior walkthrough. All right, we're gonna start with the interior view of the Scion FRS. We'll start with the driver's side. There's a looks like a cubby hole for a water bottle or uh, other stuff. Here's the window controls. It has automatic. Uh, auto down for the windows and the rear view mirror controls. On this side you'll see the trunk release and the dimmer adjustment. The hood release is down there and you can see the uh, metal pedals, the race pedals. On the dash there's a control for changing miles per hour, odometer and the display and the digital display here uh, the tack is in the middle, the speedometer is on the side. One thing to note about the speedometer is if you notice that um, you can hit 0 to 60 and you're not even at the half circle. So you do need to watch your speed and you need to be aware of that um, because it becomes really easy to, if you're just glancing at it, not to get a correct um, read on what the uh, miles per hour are. Um, however, it is coupled with a digital version that is placed in the tack. Zooming out, you can see the pedal shifters there for the uh, minus and the plus. On the side, we have the wiper controls. And in a minute, we'll get back to the... One thing I wanted to talk about was the, the, the display button on the side here. Changes uh, different settings on the screen. So if you hit it, you can see it's set to the rev. It's 3000. You can change the settings around to the outside temperature. Miles per, miles per gallon, average miles, and so when you have, you can change to whatever setting you like. Uh, the light does come on at certain revs depending on what you set it to. Uh, now we're going to move to the radio controls. Uh, this is not the premium upgrade, this is the standard that comes with the Toyota Scion. You can see that right now it's set to Bluetooth streaming audio, it's paired to the phone. It does have uh, HD video, Bluetooth, radio. HD radio, yeah. And here's the controls. Uh, it has auxiliary, Bluetooth, USB for the iPod, satellite, and disc. It has the end and call buttons for when you're paired with. Moving down, there's a dedicated clock, which is actually kind of nice because a lot of the Toyota models have moved the clock into the display unit, and it can be kind of a pain to... Uh, switch back and forth. Standard air conditioning controls comes down on most Toyotas. Here is the connection for the iPod and a 3.5 millimeter headphone for the auxiliary. Uh, basically it's compatible with most uh, MP3 players and phones. Um, I was able to pair my Android phone using Bluetooth um, and I could stream Pandora and your, your music playlist similar with the, with the iPhone. Um, if you just have a standard MP3 player, you can just connect using the 3.5mm uh, headphone jack. One thing to note is that there's a nice little cubby hole yeah, right next to the iPod connector. And it's actually designed to kind of hold the phone. It has a nice rubberized texture and the, it has a rubber, grip, uh, rubber lip right here, which really holds the phone in nicely. Um, it's, it's obviously dedicated to... Uh, storing a phone or smartphone. Um, let's pan down here. Next thing we'll talk about uh, as we come down, oh let me point out the, the nice leather trimmed uh, shift knob. Uh, in this case it's automatic but we'll show you that it's got park, rear, neutral and you can switch it to drive and then the manual transmission when you are using the shifter pedals on the on the side of the steering wheel. And as we scroll as we scroll down, uh, we came to what, the stability control and the sports control. 
Uh, basically, each setting over here is if you want to turn off traction control, I would recommend leaving it on um, just for safety reasons. This is sport and snow mode, you can choose between the two. Um, and this is the uh, vehicle stability control and sport. And as you toggle these back and forth, you'll see on the dash they turn on and you can choose sport or snow and you can turn traction control off. Um, I recommend that you just kind of keep it at the default um, unless you are driving in the snow or if you really want to tighten up the if you want to tighten up the revs you can switch it to sport mode um, so my recommendation for general driving though is to have nothing showing on the display to, to keep it um, standard unless you want to start racing and moving fast we're going to move down to the console basically it's a very simple design uh, there's a little spot there for probably change or uh, maybe keeping some papers and then as you go down, this is the handbrake right here covered in leather, as you go down shift over here there's a small cubby hole, it's uncovered it has a 12 volt cigarette lighter adapter and then it comes with a tray which you put in as a cup holder and looks like a spot for another cell phone or some papers uh, it works quite well and then the only other thing that comes with it is a really nice uh, looks like coin holder and a uh, pencil holder it can also be used to store your phone it's a pretty simple design uh, over here um, some functionality for coins and for pens and for paper the other thing I want to touch on before moving to the back is to talk about the top dash. You can see the speakers up there. The car is equipped with six speakers all together. Uh, one thing to note about this dash is that this is not a plastic that's typical of Toyota or Scion. It's actually a rubberized uh, grip. It actually works really well to put you know, your phone on. And not that I recommend that. But uh, it is also um, sits lower. It doesn't raise up. It helps you kind of see over the top uh, as you're driving. Um, the here is the carbon fiber trim on the Scion. It is important to note that the Subaru version has an aluminum trim, so it's a matter of personal preference. But uh, you know, I kind of like the the darker carbon fiber uh, fake, trim. Fake. It is it is a fake you know, plastic trim, but uh, here is the dash where the manual is kept. The, the dashboard. One thing to note is that there is a 12 volt connector in there. So if you need to um, power another device or a charge another cell phone, other than this one, there is one here too. So it really uh, has a couple options, uh, pretty well hidden, makes it a nice clean design. Uh, we're going to move to the back and kind of give you a preview of the, the rear seats and the trunk. Also, we'll come back to yeah, the Alright guys, to give you an interview. Just in, wanted to note, there's a nice uh, metal trim, uh, door sills, and of course the, the trim uh, gas pedal brake and the footrest. We're going to move to the interior back. You can see that the seats are bucket seats. They do have um, child safety settings, uh, locking restraints. So you could put a child car seat in here if you really needed to. We're going to take a tour to the back. Here's a trunk space you can see. Um, Toyota Scion sells it as it's really designed to hold up to four car tires, uh, basically racing tires, uh, as needed. So you can see there's a, it's not a full size uh, spare, but it will do. I believe it's 16 inch. It has all the tools and the uh, jacks to raise it up. And to release, to release the the back seat to put it down. You can see there's a pull here and there's a pull on this side. And basically what you do is you give it a pull here to release it. Give it a pull here to release it. And you can basically bring the whole thing down. It's a standard hatchback design. You can see. And it gives a nice uh, open space for if you do need to move stuff or if you need to put your tires in to go racing. Uh, let me just touch on the, the roof. It is, you know, it's a lower sitting car, so it is something you need to get used to. Uh, there is a light up here, has a setting for door on and off. 
and I believe this is the microphone for the Bluetooth uh, radio function. So the mic's up there. All right, and like I said, it ha does have a child safety seat locks, so you can see the the top locks up there also. So one thing we kind of wanted to show off was how the uh, sitting room is in the front and the back. So we're gonna have my brother, who owns the car, get into the back uh, back seat and kind of show how the fit is, and then we'll move the seat back, the front seat back, to what would be normal driving position. Go ahead. The jaws will like you. Now, how tall are you, Vinay? Uh, five ten. So my brother's five ten. This will give you a good example, uh, per average size, maybe. All right, so he is in the back now. Yep, not too bad right now, but when reality sets in, uh, some pretty comfortable seats back here uh, overall. So on. let's. Uh, it's only two plus two, so no. no it, is, rest, it is a two plus two design, which is kind of nice because what it will allow you to do is get a, a cheaper insurance. So that is standard driving position for the driver to be comfortable. Um, you may bump your knees a little bit on the steering wheel and here's my brother and you can see his knees are kind of touching the edge uh, I would say for short term driving uh, city trips probably good I think about an hour in here max yeah probably an hour max I think it probably starts to get uncomfortable uh, a little bit past that so yeah so I just want to point out I'm, I'm in here my, my knees are not touching the steering my knees are kind of touching near the key but if, if I, my foot was on the pedal and the brake uh, not too bad, not too bad. So, I could drive with that, and my brother's in the back there. A lot of hard plastic back here. Yeah. Uh, a fake plastic armrest right here, pretty much, on there. Got a speaker here. Uh, got pretty good headroom, actually, well, not really, honestly. I got probably about an inch before my head hits the glass back here. Uh, I do see sunlight, which is always nice, but uh, it's pretty low here. 510 here. So I got about an inch left before my head hits this. Um, no neck rest really at all. Oh, that is important to know. There is no headrest on there uh, on, these, you, on these cars. You could put a baby seat in here. I don't know why you would want to do that. But right. You could if you wanted to. Um, right. We touched on that earlier. That there's anchor points down there, two of them, and then a lot of plastic. And some of the fit and finish back here. It looks like they took some shortcuts. There's like some gaps here. You can kind of see that I'm looking at here, the back seats definitely they skimped out on. If you wanted to save money, that's probably where right. you'd want to do it. So The nice thing about it is that it does have the airbags, the side restraint airbags. Yeah. So, Alright, so let me get back out of the car. Once again, back seats are probably best uh, used for short term, short term driving around the city. Uh, it's probably going to get really uncomfortable after an hour or two. This is a nice leather trim if you feel it's a soft, uh, it's not a hard plastic. You know, it's combined with hard plastic over on this side, but it's a nice leather trim with uh, red threads. Uh, there's a nice light down here. And uh, one of the corrections I wanted to make from the earlier is that it actually has eight speakers combined total. Just wanted to point that out. Alright. One thing I wanted to note uh, on the outside is standard headlights. The lights at the bottom that look like fog lights are actually the turn signals. Um, you will notice it's probably a spot to install aftermarket fog lights if need be. The other thing we'll talk about was this uh, emblem. And I'll have my brother talk about that. Yeah, in every other country it's pretty much a Toyota FT86 like most of you already know. Uh, though they did leave that here in regards to the Corolla 86, you know, legacy they have. Um, so it is, uh, the emblem's still there, but it's still called here in America Scion FRS, unfortunately. Um, kind of did wish they kept on the Toyota name brand, uh, but it looks still pretty nice on there overall. Pretty sporty looking. Yeah. Alright guys, I want to just uh, touch on the wheel. These are 17 inch, they're Michelin uh, branded. These are technically part of the Prius Plus package. Uh, they have a little bit low grip, but really, it really works out when you're cornering and you, you want to do some drifting. These actually uh, are a good balance between the two and it works really well. It has a dual muffler, exo you know, dual exhaust system. Uh, one thing to point out is at the back uh, is this backup uh, brake and rear backup lights. Uh, it's important to note that on the Scion, the American version, this is not connected. This is really the, the bumper is made for the Europe uh, and this is, this is the body trim. 
uh, Toyota chose to leave it unconnected here for here in America, but it is required in places like Europe and other international countries. So I'm sure you could buy a kit at some point to actually hook that up. Uh, you do want to check on the legalities of having that and the other brake lights um, set up. So we're going to take a tour of the engine real quick. I know that most of the reviews uh, already have towards the engine, but we'll just do a quick review. Uh, the headlights, you've got the turn signals. It does have some really cool side markers uh, right above the wheel well here. Um, I don't know if you can tell or not, but they are uh, lit on when the lights are on. A uh, very nice feature, gives it a very racy, sporty look. A very, very traditional race car styling. We're going to take a look at the engine now. Obviously, it's been pointed out that this is a collaboration between Subaru and Toyota. It's the, got the Boxster name. Um, you can see the DC45, I mean the D45 uh, marking plate on it. The tour. There's the battery. The fuse box over there. Um, dip oil, dipstick oil. Alright. Uh, here's the air intake. Uh, in the front of the car. I'm gonna guess that at some point there'll be aftermarket parts available to make it a colder intake or even just uh, throw in a, it, it should be a nice filter. It should be noted that that's the direct injection. Uh, it should be noted that there's Subaru run more on this car than anything else. You got Subaru here, you got Subaru stickers here. Subaru of course made the Boxer engine. Um, the direct injection is made by Toyota, that's why it's built as Toyota. Just so you don't know if the word why that's uh, called a boxer engine is because it's horizontally opposed, kind of like a boxer, so the pistons are going back and forth like this. That's why it's uh, got that name to it. And that'll pretty much allow uh, a lower center of gravity for this car. Um, but I'm sure most of you already knew that one. All right, okay. and one thing to note is the uh, strut bars. Yeah. It's handling is like a dream. It's pretty good. Um, there's not, not much body roll at all. It's handled perfectly. You just kind of point the car and it goes. All right. So anyway, you guys, that's a, just a brief tour of the car. Uh, we wanted to kind of give people an idea of the interior that maybe you can't really tell from um, just the other videos that Scion and other people have released. Uh, and you know, if you were looking, mostly we wanted to give people a preview of the interior as far as the radio and the, the dash went. Anyway, hope, um, hope that helps some people. Uh, have fun and uh, Take care.